a story about fathers and sons and how your desire to make your son think you're a hero can destroy you. Eric Kernan's father abandons him when he's very young, so he only knows him as a guy who's accomplished in journalism. That's all he knows. He knows that he was a great sportscaster, that he hung out with a lot of uh, famous celebrities, that, uh, you know, that he knew this boxer and knew this football player, and so on and so on. He's gone into the same line of journalism that his father was in, and so therefore he's living under a giant, a giant shadow, living in a giant shadow. And so he's got to, uh, what he really feels is this need to push past it to become something greater than his father was. Hey, boss. We got a little buried today, huh? What are you talking about? Uh, the Germain fight I covered. It's a, it's a good fight. Oh, yeah. I, I buried it, right. Why? Some things you had to get buried. Well, that's what high school wrestling's for, right? I mean, it's a solid story. Not a fact missing. I mean, you had copy 40 minutes after the fight. Mm, yeah, you. You're like a machine. Well, the style of one, too. Oh, wait a minute, Ralph. This... Do you mind sitting? Now, listen, I appreciate what you're doing, filling my pages. And I don't want you to stop. Hey, Ralph. Sorry for interrupting. Do you want me to email you those quotes? Yeah, yeah, right. But your copy, it's unimpressive. A lot of typing, not much writing. Well, Sam Kirby, like... He the... doesn't work here anymore. The truth is, I forget your pieces while I'm reading them. Now, if this is the best you can do, I'm not going to complain. But I know you can do a lot better. Why is that, Ralph? Because of your name. The guy I play thinks that this kid can actually come up with something, because his father came up with things. At least he throws that challenge to him. Eric has been treated like a star because everybody knows he has the gift of prose. He has the gift of... Um, he, if he would apply his intelligence in the correct way, he could be great. And everybody sees this potential. Are you going to make more money at the magazine? Mm, no. But that's not really the point, buddy. It's, it's about the prestige. And I'd probably have to write maybe 15 articles a year. Maybe. That's a lot of stories. Actually, it's not. It's only about one every three and a half weeks. That means I can really concentrate on them. Make him good. Then maybe I can become as respected as your mom. It could be like a, a ticket to the big time kind of thing. Los Angeles Times, New York like Times. Like the story on the boxer that you pitched to Whitley? Exactly. I think everybody in the office has a crush on Eric. I think it's just the way that it is here. I think he's, you know, I um, I myself had a big crush on Josh Hartnett when he played Trip Fontaine in The Virgin Suicides. I have to tell you, ah. Oh, He's Eric. There's a little Trip Fontaine in Eric. I think he's the guy that walks through the office that, you know, women sort of stop in their tracks. And he's cute and he's accessible and he's so sweet. And she's, she's you know, business minded and she knows that uh, that most of the time he's just there for work. And in the beginning, he calls her Millie for crying out loud. But she's she's able to have fun with it, which is what I liked about her. Eric wants out basically, but he doesn't want out in a small way he wants to he doesn't want to switch to a different paper and do the same thing he wants to you know move up he's still chasing that you know that that brass ring that will hopefully you know make the name Kernan more about him than his father hey. really appreciate it so it's just two minutes long yeah yeah if that hey champ Who's that you're fighting there, champ? Satterfield versus Kinky. Tommy Kinky. Huh? Never had it in him to hurt a man. That was his problem. His skills, though, that him. <laughs> Where'd you get this? 
Well, champ, I'm a world-class investigative journalist. This is what I do. Here's the thing about making independent films right now. They're really tough to do. Because if you want to spend uh, any money at all, you know, you have to get well-known actors. And then the, um, you know, the people who finance the film really try to take control of your film as much as they can because they want to protect their interests. It has to be under a certain length um, you know, for, uh, for overseas. And we have to meet the objectives, critical objectives of Japan or you know, Poland or wherever, or you know, whatever territories there are. And, and all sorts of decision making comes into the creativity of the film that has nothing to do with the creativity of the film. And when we started this, I sat down with Bob Yari, who had, you know, um, his film had just won the Academy Award. This film we produced called Crash had just won the Academy Award. And he said to me, look, I'm going to let you make your movie. Rod's great. He's a, he's a smart guy. He knows exactly what he wants from this project. He's worked on it for years. And, uh, and he's, you know, he's very helpful when, when, I have, when I have questions about, you know, what he went through as a journalist or, you know, what he you know, where he thinks that this guy is at with his father and all sorts of other things. We have debates, you know, which is good, I think. It's good to have conversation. Uh, it breeds new ideas. And I, if it were my choice, I'd work on one scene for three days. You know, like, that's just the way that I am. So it's been good for me to kind of work in this sort of way because Rod does two takes and he, he wants to move on. have a shot at the magazine. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it is. That is great. I appreciate what you're doing, but you copy. It's unimpressive. A lot of typing, not much writing. Eric Kernan needed something big to put his life back on track. I forget your pieces while I'm reading. I know you can do a lot better. But what he found <gasps> was more than he could have hoped for. Oh, man, are you okay? It's fun to beat the champ. You see the champ? What are you talking about? Battling Bob Satterfield. Number three in the world. Well, there's this boxer. He's living on the streets. Boom! No, I ain't no boat. I'm just homeless. What's his name? Battle! Satterfield. I'm sure my dad used to idolize that guy. I never dreamed though I'd be heavyweight champ. I always thought that I would win it. You fought the mother. You fought Patterson. <laughs> this article is my title shot. All right, son. You ask your questions. I ask. Nice piece on this guy. Kernan. You are on your way to a Pulitzer, Eric. I Eric Kernan. Cool. You're pretty proud of me. Real proud. See, your dad, he ain't perfect. And one day, he's gonna get his shot. This is Eric Kernan. You write that article. Now, the story he just told is nothing compared to the one. I just saw him last night. He's about to live. Are you sure about that? And in this corner, when the lean mean... You know, I did also find this. Where'd you get this? 185 pounds. That's the man you interviewed. You keep a secret, Molly. Can you? From Chicago, Illinois. There's going to be an internal review. We're going to want to talk to your wife. You let me down, and you let everyone else who works on this paper down. A very good man. And a good father. I'm responsible. There's no going back. Well, I hope that the one day, God willing, your son does for you what you just done for me. A writer, like a boxer, must stand alone. The truth is revealed, and there's nowhere to hide.